I'm looking. Who is that? Canuck. Is that Canuck Duke? Apparently, Pistons material was left on the cutting room floor. Yeah. That's Probably. Something. Probably so. Jermaine O'Neal's production company, man. What do you expect? Neil Rule, Joyke Bell back with you here on Woodward Sports. Get, get interactive with us. The Facebook Live, the YouTube. Uh, make sure you download the app as well. Detroit. Very easy. Download that app. Push play. You can go back. Catch episodes you missed. Anything you want to go back and listen to, you, you certainly can. So you know, get involved with the show. We're doing it here uh, all the time, the Midday Show, 11 to 1. Lots of news coming up about the Midday Show a little bit later on the show, so stick around for that. The Lions made some headlines. They went out into the free agency market. They added a cornerback, Nikel Robbie Coleman, now in the fold. Played his college football at USC. A uh, very big-time player at USC. I uh, had a great college career, spent some time with the Rams, spent some time with Buffalo as well. And, you, you know, Joy, when, when you look at it, the Lions roster in totality, this move is not a shocker. Uh-huh. And uh, certainly at the cornerback spot, and, and look, we know that Okuda's going to get all the eyeballs, Okuda's going to get all the, the headlines. But low-key... I, I I like this move, low key. He's he's a solid NFL player. He's you know he's made he's made some money in the league. He's 29 yeah. years old. He yeah. he's been around. He gets it. it he gets it. It's so, it's that's a solid signing to me, especially when you're up against it. Yeah, you, this is what this does for this organization. It gives someone that that Jeff can have someone to talk to in that locker room. A guy that's going on his ninth year. Uh, a guy that has that. You know, now he's coming in. Jeff has what Slay had. And a Rasheed Mathis, so a guy that he can go to, say, listen, when this happened, what should I do? All right, when this happened, what should I look for? When this happens, um, should I go drop into this coverage? Should I take this guy inside? Like, and this is what he needs, a guy that he respects. Because when you, you're going to have a lot of guys on your team, and you can look at their resume, their body of work, and say, uh, you know what, I'm going to take advice from this guy, or I'm not going to take advice from this guy. Uh, and so uh, this is what he needs. And I, I remember when we were talking about this on the show before you got here, um, that he didn't have that in the locker room. He didn't have a coach that he can talk to that, that he respected as much as the one that he has now. All right? He didn't have any veterans in the room that he can go to and talk to the same way that Slay had um, in the locker room. And so um, I'm looking to see what he, what, what he would be doing this year. I'm talking about Jeff. I'm, I'm really interested in seeing that. Um, and so bringing him, this is a great signing. Uh, it's a great signing. They, they need they need leadership in that in, in that quarterback room. They need it. And and Joy, that is like a tangible thing, right? That the whole veteran, the whole veteran young guy phenomenon. That that is something guys are signed in the NFL strictly for that, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that that's something people talk a lot about it, and and sometimes things get overvalued. Uh, players I, I coach. Think, yeah. Yeah, players coach, uh, chemistry, I think, gets mm-hmm. overvalued. Show me a team that's winning, I'll show you good chemistry. Show mm-hmm. me a team that's losing. Yeah. You know, it, there, there's not good chemistry. But this is tangible. This is real, isn't it? It is. So it's funny. We talk about teams that have fun, who respect their coach, um, and teams that are building winning cultures. So I've talked to teams, say, or players who play for, say, um, the Rams. You can say the Rams. I had teammates who played for the Rams. I had uh, former teammates who went to go play for Seattle. And – they would talk about the culture uh, in these two places. And, you know, Pete Carroll was one of the coaches who he's a he's a player's coach. And so players love playing for him because um, he can relate. Uh, he makes the he makes the at the environment there healthy. Uh, he makes it competitive. He made he makes that big fun. play right there that got the Rams into a Super Bowl. <laughs> you know what? They're showing the Saints play yeah, right uh, there. Yeah, you know, controversy. A little controversy. Hey, but hey. No flag, no foul. That's what I'm saying. They no went flag, to the Super no Bowl. Foul. The Saints didn't. Yeah. So that's how I know it wasn't a penalty. Yeah. Because they ended up in the Super Bowl. No, <laughs> but but that but that is real though. I mean, there there is a degree that's expected of him. He he expects that of himself, does he not? To to, to contribute, right? Like I, I I would guess that Robbie Coleman will take Jeff Okuda's success personally. Like he 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 feels like he to some degree. I'm not saying like it's going to uh, define it, his career. It, it's, it's gonna but he's be, there to help. He's going to be there to help. Um, especially in this time and in age in his career, he has to bring something more to the table than just his athletic ability. He has to bring something to the locker room. And I'm pretty sure it's something that they found in him because right now when I talk with um, Brad Holmes, he's looking for value um, anywhere on the team. Right. He's looking for value. And so he's going to bring b- b- value on the field, but also he's going to bring it in the locker room. He's going to bring it in with his knowledge. I remember when I left Detroit and I went to the Bears and we're in the meeting room. We're watching film. 
And this is kind of where playing on a lot of different teams and being in a lot of different offenses can kind of help you. And we're sitting down and um, the coach is talking and we're watching, we're watching film. And as we're watching film, I see something on the film that I say, you know what, on this play, I think any play like this, we should, you know, do this. I'm not gonna say what it was because you know, it was like a little Trade hidden gem. It's yeah. like a little hidden gem. I said, well, we should do this on this play. And he said, why would we do that? And then I explained to him why we would do it. He said, you know what, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Let me run about the coaches. And he did, but we had so many, we had young quarterbacks um, because I think our starting quarterback was down. I think Jay Culler was down. And um, and so we didn't want to do it. because We didn't want to put more on the QB's plate than what they already had. But that was something that they looked into doing in the future. And so it's things like that that he'll be able to bring to the table that we say, well, okay, well, you know, let's, let's take a look at it. So. And, and I haven't I haven't seen the numbers as of yet, you know, as far as the salary goes or everything. I took a look before we went on there. I, I don't know that it had been reported as of yet. I'll be I'll be on the lookout for that stuff. But yeah. I mean, you know, Joyke, when when dudes get signed a, a week into the preseason or whatever, when when guys get signed around this time, they've they've assessed Joyke. I mean, you got to make a business decision at, at some point to say, hey, you know, I, I do I want to be in here? Do I not want to be in here? Uh, it it tends to make sense for both parties at this point, doesn't it? The player and the organization money-wise. Yeah, yeah money-wise. So when they usually come in around this time, it's usually a one- or two-year deal, not too long-term, because at this point in your career, you're kind of betting on yourself. Right. You no, know, you look at a lot of the players who, you know, from uh, Darrell Rivas to, uh, like, and and Sue, they're going to go sign that one, two-year deal when they get in those later years um, because, you know, they probably get more money. They bet on themselves. And so... Um, I guess we'll see what numbers um, he has, uh, hopefully sometime within the next couple of days, if not tonight. So, you know, let's see. But, you know, Brad Holmes is a smart guy. He's a smart guy. and uh, He's he's made a lot of chess moves that um, a lot of people aren't paying attention to or right. they don't see. Uh, it just looks like he's just picking up guys, but he's not just picking up guys. And, and, that, and that's a good segue, Joy, because I wanted to ask you about that, where with what you've seen from Brad Holmes so far, and, and this is something that, when you and I did shows a couple weeks ago, when I did shows with Terry Foster yesterday, this is something that I've talked about when I was sitting watching the draft, having some drinks with my buddies and all that stuff. There is a, an organizational shift as far as the mission goes. Brad Holmes has come in and changed this dynamic to me where draft capital is valued, where mm-hmm. smart contracts are valued, where things have to make business sense. For the Lions to do, you've talked to him to some degree. Do you do you notice that? And and more than that, even just from when you were here before to now, do you notice that there's a shift as far as you know the organizational focus goes, and more importantly, what they value? Well, you know, it, from when I played to where to where to where it is right now at this point in time, wasn't the case back when I played. You know, they didn't get those picks for um, for grooming. Um, these minority coaches, these my, these minority um, GMs, and, and now that we're um, we're able to get picks for these right. guys when they become a head coach or a head GM on another team, now you see teams are starting to groom more minority players. And so you look at our coaching staff; we have a lot of minority coaches on our coaching staff that are big names that one day might be a head coach somewhere. And with every one of those coaches, coaches that we have on roster or on the coaching staff. You know, that's, those are two to three third-round draft picks um, in the following draft year. And so you look at our roster, we have a lot of big-name coaches um, on our roster that has the potential to either was a head coach who wants to be a head coach again or assistant coaches who want to be a head coach someday, even to, the, um, even to our assistant GM. And so these are the type of moves he's making to help build this team because right now you, we all know that his expertise is, is evaluating college talent. If we and he his belief is to build a team in order to build a team, you have to build it through the draft. And the more picks we have, the more he can, you know, showcase his talent. And, and that's something that he values. And in, in the multiple first, I love, love, loved the Stafford trade. Loved it. It was it, great. It was, it was a great trade because of what we were able to get for him. And then, but not only that, but what we did with those picks once we got it. And so, right. I'm excited to see what he does next year because if um, I. I graded his draft year this year A, uh, a, a so, um, you know, actually an A minus, and it will be an A depending on what um, I see out of this new running back we have. Um, but other than that, I mean, 
you can't beat it. You can't, you can't beat it. And so next year, I'm excited to see what he does with that. Yeah, and, and there's, there's tons of chips for the poker game. There's tons of chips in, in play right now for Brad Holmes. And that's, that's what I like about it, just multiple first-round picks. I, I, I've heard people around town call them lottery tickets, I guess you would say. I, 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 I don't necessarily want to call them lottery tickets because in the hands of, of somebody who that's his game, that's what he does, they're, they're more than lottery tickets. They're, they're chips in the poker game. So, you know, it, it is an exciting time going forward. I mean, as far as this season goes, though, you know, Nikel Robbie Coleman, all right, a good pick, but again, Joy, I'm going to keep coming back to it. You and I are going to do lots of shows together. It's just the Jeff Okuda thing, man. He's he's not my, and, and we're going to get into what you, would you expect the most from coming up when we come back from the next break. But the Jeff Okuda thing, man, that's that's going to be big. It's going to be huge. It's yeah. going to be huge. But he definitely has uh, the talent. Uh, it's just more so the guidance and the experience to be able to g gain this. Because you remember, even with you know, with Slay, he was benched, you know, two or three games uh, in 2000. Um, when he came out, it was 2013. Uh, he was benched a couple of games, right. a few games. So, um, but eventually he got it together. Um, and when I say got it together, I mean he was with Rasheem Mathis day in, day out. Even if it was in a locker room, um, away games, that's who he yeah. roomed. I, he didn't room with them, but he'll be in his room, that be on the game, playing the game, just having that camaraderie, learning as much as he could. Um, because Rasheem, I mean, he played 12 years in the league. And so you have a guy like that that can kind of give you this knowledge. I mean, look at him. Look how many Pro Bowls he's had. Absolutely. We'll get into that a little bit more. Also going to look at this Lions uh, unit. Uh, what are you most excited about? We'll get into that uh, coming up as well. This is a midday show here on Woodward Sports Network. But before we do that, have I told you about Levels Grand Opening? Levels Provisioning Center Grand Opening and Car Giveaway. Live broadcast all day at opening event with Woodward Sports. We'll be there. Levels in center line 23968 Sherwood Avenue, center line Michigan, 48015 zip code when is it friday august 20th it's coming up so make sure you get your tickets make sure you're there we'll be on site to help promote the grand opening and new delivery service go to enjoylevels.com for more information stay tuned with sports i'm looking to bring on another hvac tech right now we are recruiting five to ten techs a month we're looking to grow and expand every new tech we hire is from northwestern tech the hands-on training is fantastic they're always my first call we love hiring northwestern tech grads they come out trained and ready to work our program is only ten and a half months and our next classes are starting soon so why wait i'm looking to hire i'm looking to hire hire a graduate of northwestern tech northwestern tech northwestern tech northwestern tech, northwestern tech. 